Hello everybody, it's Tortoise Investing coming at you today with three dividend stocks that you can buy and hold forever. If you love dividends and you have it, make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, comment down below. I greatly, greatly appreciate everyone's support. Those things are super free to do and it helps out the YouTube algorithm, which has been, uh, it's a bit tricky, but your support really means the world to me. Now, before we dive into the stocks, none of this is financial advice. Do your own research before buying anything. I'm going to show you into my portfolio real quick. This is how everything's looking. My unrealized gains. And yeah, I am down on Hershey and Extra Space Storage at the moment, double digits. But I love both these companies long term. And I intend to just buy more as they drop more. Uh, Extra Space Storage did go up 10% after earnings. So to get that back is very, very nice. Take a look here at the portfolio year to date, 19.33%. That's how our allocations are looking. Now, what are we going to be taking a look at? We got Genuine Parts Company, we got Canadian Pacific Railway, and we have Old Realty Income. Genuine Parts Company, this is what I refer to as an old reliable, and the reason I say that is it's been increasing its dividend for 67 years. It's probably a lot longer than some of have been alive. Has a adjusted free cash flow yield of 4.2%, dividend yield 2.79%, and a payout ratio of 42.27%. Is down on the year almost 20%. The reason that's kind of got my attention. This thing, you know, it's very, very reliable in what it does. Revenue, revenue has been increased at a rate of 5.44% over the last 10 years. Again, this is just very reliably going up and to the right. Free cash flow has been, let's see here, 10 years. Uh, has been increasing over the last five years at a rate of 12.24%. Uh, so they are increasing their free cash flow rate. Uh, this is on a free cash flow per share basis there we go that's what i was wanting free cash flow 3.43 percent over the last 10 years 11.36 percent over the last five years this is because they do share buybacks so this is going to be a little bit higher 4.41 percent over the last 10 years and 12.24 percent over the last five years which you like to see you like to see the free cash flow per share be higher than the free cash flow because that does mean that they're buying back shares and you as a cash as a stockholder are getting a bigger and bigger piece of that pie now eps eps been growing at rate 7.22 percent over the last 10 years again just really reliably going up and to the right debt they have 3.08 billion their ebitda is right at 2 billion so no issues there i don't like companies that have more than three times their ebitda in debt and this one's got a really nice looking balance sheet the dividend the dividend's been increased by a rate of 5.85 percent over the last 10 years so again you know inflation beating growth over a 67 year period that is just awesome in my eyes uh, shares outstanding they've been buying them back slowly but surely it looks like they're increasing their share buybacks let's look at this at a quarterly basis real quick Yep, they are nibbling at shares still yet, which is good. You want them to be buying those shares, especially since they're in a little bit of a dip. And return on capital employed, 13% 2019, 13.6 2020, 16.25 in 2021, 18.69 in 2022. The market average usually around 9 to 10%. So this is above that and growing, which you like to see. Next up, we got old Canadian Pacific Railway. I do really like this one. I personally decided to go with uh, CNI, Canadian National Railway, uh, International. Uh, reason means I think they have a little bit of a better balance sheet, but this company did an acquisition, and it went through earlier this year to have Kansas City Southern combined with them, which will become the first and only single-line railway connecting Canada, U.S., and Mexico. So that's a big deal. That's going to help their cash flows a lot. So the reason this is going to look down is because I had to issue out a bunch of shares for the acquisition, but that is not a problem. Free cash flow yield, 3.32%. Still very good. Uh, dividend yield, 7.78%. Payout ratio, 23.4%. They are down in this little dip area. They did pop back up. They're coming right back down, which reason, again, it's kind of got my eye. This thing under 70, I just... Like, I own a railway, but I would 
almost buy even more. I'd, I'd almost just add this to the portfolio. Revenue. Revenue has been increasing over 4.46% over the last 10 years, 6% over the last 5 years. And the free cash flow is just bonkers. 30.5% over the last 10 years, 25% in the last 5 years. Free cash flow per share. Even though they issued out those shares, it is still right at 30% over the last 10 years, which is just crazy amount of cash just coming in. And it's going to be even more because they made this acquisition, so they're going to have even more revenue streams coming in. EPS, EPS has been increasing at rate 21% over the last 10 years. Just silly. Uh, debt, they do have quite a bit of debt. Um, again, because of the acquisition and everything that they've been doing, which is not a problem. If you're going to go in debt, go in debt for a good reason. Uh, the dividend, dividend's been increasing at a rate of 7.49% over the last 10 years. The reason it's kind of a little bit of everywhere, it is a, Can a Canada. It is a Canadian stock, so the... Uh, conversion will be different from time to time and as you can see here they did have that spike up with their uh, shares outstanding again understandable that acquisition and uh, because of that it did hurt the return on capital employed but before that they were very reliably in the mid-teens which is very nice let's look at it quarterly are they buying back shares again not yet but i have a feeling that they will get right back to it and lastly really income Everyone's favorite monthly dividend payer known as the monthly dividend company. Just free cash flow yield 8.16%, dividend yield 6% plus, and uh, payout ratio. We don't look at that because it's a re. You look at funds from operations, and I'm going to tell you this company knows what they're doing. Everything is perfectly fine. They are down 21.5%, and this might be a good buying opportunity for some folks. Uh, again, not financial advice to your own research. Uh, this thing's being down 20 plus percent is just something you don't see a lot of REITs are down because uh, interest rates higher for longer has got a lot of them spooks usually these companies carry quite a bit of debt uh but realty income has been making some noise they recently just acquired spirit realty capital so it's again it's just going to add to their revenue and their free cash flow stream over time and the other thing you get with this is reliability they've been increasing that dividend for 31 years 31 years, they've been increasing this thing through wars, they've been increasing it through the dot-com bubble, financial crisis, COVID, they just keep ticking. Love it. Revenue, 21% over the last 10 years, very nice. Free cash flow, as you can see, it just keeps on ticking, 22.8% over the last 10 years. Very, very nice. And again, that dividend... Uh, they increase it every quarter by just a smidge, and then they usually give you a little bit bigger hike uh, at the end of the year. But 3.8% dividend growth over the last 10 years is nothing to just ignore. It is inflation beating over the long run. And again, it's a monthly payer, so if you like to see those dividends roll in and compound over time, I mean, they do it better than anyone. But yeah, those are three dividend companies that you can buy and hold forever. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you haven't, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Drop a like. And until next time, see you.